And uh, this morning, we are continuing in our series called Family Grace. And as we do so, today we're going to look in particular at parenting adult children. Now, if you're not a parent, I believe that God has something to say to you this morning. It may be about your relationship with God. It may be about your relationship with your parents. Or it may be about how you can support parents that you know. But keep your ears perked for how God is going to speak to you this morning. And to state the obvious, I have absolutely no experience parenting adult children. I have never done it. This is an area that is foreign to me. The experts in this field are sitting among you. But I know some of these experts, and uh, I've heard their thoughts and questions, and I've realized that this is an important aspect of family life. Years ago, I was grumbling about the demands and costs of, of parenting two young boys, and uh, a woman who had older children said to me, oh, just wait, it gets harder. And I heard this, and I thought, harder? No way! <laughs> this is supposed to you know, get easier from here on out. So let me ask a question of those of you who have adult children. In your opinion, and there's no right answer here, but in your opinion, which is harder, parenting young children or parenting adult children? Now, you can't just say, well, it depends, or in what way. You have to pick one or the other. So which is harder? Now, I realize some of you have children here, so maybe this is a loaded question. Okay, so if you have children here, you don't have to vote. But, so I'm curious, though. So I want to see a show of hands. This is for those who are parents who have adult children. Who would say parenting young children is harder? Who would say parenting adult children is harder? Who's abstaining? Okay, all right. So, um, that was kind of mixed, I think. I didn't, you know, anyone take down those numbers? Kind of mixed. Um, I remember uh, at a previous church, uh, one day one of the women in the church walked up to me and she said, we need to start a support group for parents of, of adult children. And she was only kind of kidding. And she basically was saying that because there were so many challenges and frustrations and heartaches that, you know, these, these, these adults, these parents in our church wanted a support group. Parenting adult children can be painful. Now, at the same time, parenting adult children can be deeply joyful. Last week, someone mentioned to me what a, what a great joy it is to see your own children become parents and, and to watch them grow in that role. I remember years ago, I was having a conversation with a professor at Fuller Seminary. And uh, this professor had a son who was in his 20s. And he said to me, of all the stages of parenting, this one right now is my favorite. And he said, you know, I had dinner last night with my son. And just to be able to sit down over a meal and talk together as two adults, it's pretty amazing. And I was like, yes, okay, good. There, there's some hope. It's, it's not all downhill after puberty. That's good. So, so parenting adult children is a roller coaster ride with, with highs and lows. And what I want to focus on this morning is how this ride teaches us the gospel in a way that nothing else can. And, and here's what I mean by that. Isn't it striking that when scripture seeks to reveal God's character... When it seeks to help us understand who God is, it often describes God as a parent, as a father. Today's parable from Luke 15 is the most famous parable that Jesus tells. And in this parable, Jesus describes the essence of who God is. And the best way that Jesus can describe that essence is to tell a story about a father who has two adult sons. So parenting adult children isn't just about parenting. It points to something beyond itself, to God. Parenting adult children is a window into God's heart. Parenting and God are deeply connected. And this morning, I want to look at the, the parable of the prodigal son to see what it teaches us about both. 
And one of the first things we see when we look at this parable is what we've just been describing. That, that parenting adult children involves high highs and low lows. Uh, deep pain and great joy. And I'd like to consider both ends of this spectrum as described in this parable. So first, the pain. The father in this story has two adult sons. The classic older son who is responsible and the younger son who is a slacker. One son who does everything right and one son who does everything wrong. And surprisingly, both of these sons step on their father's heart. The younger son says to his dad, Father, I want my inheritance now. In essence, he's saying, I wish you were dead so I can get my stuff now. That's really what he's saying. If you're asking for inheritance, right, you're saying, I wish you were dead. The father gives him the inheritance. And then the son goes off to a distant land and he, he squanders it in loose living. Now talk about a painful experience for a parent to go through. Why would a son or daughter do this to his or her parents? We don't know for sure why this son does this. Maybe this son didn't think that he was wanted. You know, maybe the older brother got all the praise in the family. Or maybe this younger son just wanted to see the world. He just felt so constricted at home. For whatever reason, the son turns his back on his father. He says, I'm out of here, and, and dad watches as his son walks away. See, I wonder how many parents have experienced this kind of pain. An adult son or daughter saying, I'm not speaking to you anymore. Or simply a son or daughter growing distant. You know, there's a line in this story that says, while he was still a long way off. A long way off. That can be taken geographically, a physical distance, but that can also be taken relationally, an emotional distance. This happens to many parents when their children become young adults. They push mom or dad away. They grow distant. I know that happened for me when I went to college. I was living in Pasadena, went to Pasadena High School. I went to Occidental College, which is Eagle Rock, which is Glendale. It's like 15 minutes from Pasadena. I never went home. I lived in the dorm. I didn't even go home to do laundry. I was in college. I was in a dorm. I didn't really think about it. I just didn't go home very often. And I do know as I got into my older years of college, and even the years right after college, I did become more distant emotionally from my parents, and even critical of them. I remember being more critical of their faith, more critical of their church, more critical of how they did things. And, and, I, and my parents noticed this. And I remember one time having a conversation with them where they said, basically, what happened? You don't want to come home? You don't want to be with us? You don't like us? I have four sisters and a brother. My parents live in Seattle. Their closest child is a four-hour car drive away. My sister, I have a sister in California. I'm in Hawaii, a sister in Australia, and a brother in India. And I know that there are times when my parents feel that distance, where they, they feel left out or cut off. See, the father in this story experiences the pain of that distance from his youngest son. But notice that the father also experiences pain in dealing with his oldest son. His oldest son has never disobeyed him. He's always been there by his side. He's the son he can count on. He's the son he's going to pass the business on to. But how does this son respond when his younger brother comes back and dad throws a party for him? He refuses to go into the house, right? He stands out in the field and, and, and sulks until his father goes out to talk to him. And, and, and when his dad pleads for him to come in, Listen to what the older son says. Dad, all these years I've been working like a slave for you. Who would want to hear that from their son or daughter? Like that's what disobedience has meant to this son? 
I've been working like a slave for you, and you haven't given me diddly squat. You haven't even ever given me like a bunch of burgers and hot dogs so I can have a party with my friends. Right? That's what he says to his dad. Wow. I can't imagine as a parent hearing that from my son or from a daughter. Instead of being grateful, the older son is critical of his dad. And, and quite often, parents of adult children end up feeling criticized rather than thanked. The older son is, is, is just as distant as the younger son. He's physically present, but emotionally speaking, there's a chasm between him and his father. He doesn't know his dad. He doesn't understand his dad's heart. And I wonder how many parents have experienced this kind of pain. The pain that comes from feeling misunderstood, that comes from being seen as a burden rather than a gift. Parenting, adult children in particular, can expose us to pain. And that pain points us to something deeper. That pain points us to the pain that God feels. If your heart has broken for a son or daughter, for a decision they've made, for a mess they've gotten into, for a hurt they've experienced, then your heart has felt God's heart. You have felt the heartache that God feels when he looks out at the world. Here's why that's so significant. To truly understand the gospel, we need to understand God's heart. God is so against sin because God is so for us. God wants us to experience life, and sin is anything and everything that, that, that leads us away from life. When we turn away from God's path, God suffers. When, when we choose dead-end alleys that go nowhere, when we end up forking out pig slop in a distant land, God's heart breaks for us because God's heart is tied to ours. In the same way that a parent's heart is tied to their children. Parents of adult children can understand in a unique way how God suffers when we sin. And how God's heart longs for his children to come home. Parenting and God are connected. The pain of parenting means that we can understand God's heart. It also means that God can understand our heart. See, if you're a parent who has lost a child or had your heart broken by a child, I can't say to you, I know what you're going through because I don't. But God does. God has felt that pain. God knows what it's like to be in your shoes. And that means that you're not alone. God is with you. God can meet you in, in what you're going through and draw you closer to God's heart through it. Parenting involves painful moments. And one of the questions raised in this story is, how do we as parents respond when our kids are making choices that cause pain to us and to them? <laughs> how do we respond when they make decisions that break our hearts? Now, one of the striking features of the father in this story is that he isn't controlling. When the younger son asks for his inheritance, the father doesn't say, over my dead body. When the younger son sets off on his journey to the distant land, the father doesn't chase him down and say, you can't go. When the older brother refuses to come into the party, the father goes out and pleads with him, but he doesn't demand that he doesn't come in. He doesn't say, get in the house right now or you lose your inheritance. In fact, the, father, the story ends with the older brother still being out in the field, 
We're not sure what decision he's going to make. The father in this story influences his sons, but he doesn't control them. And there's a world of difference between the two. As Andy Stanley points out, every parent starts out in a position of control. I control whether or not my sons watch TV. I control what time they go to bed. I control a lot of their life. And I have this control because of my size and position. I'm bigger, and I'm dad, and they have to do what I say. But over time, size and position no longer matter. Over time, I no longer have control and instead only have influence. And what determines the weight of my influence? The quality of my relationship with my children. The key to influence is the relationship. If the relationship is weak, the influence will be weak. If the relationship is strong, the influence will be strong. It all comes down to the relationship, which is particularly important to remember during that transition period, high school, beyond, when children make their way into adulthood. See, what happens if I continue relying solely on size and position during that period? I end up eroding the relationship and therefore eroding my influence. The goal of the father in this story isn't to get his sons to do what he wants them to do. The goal of the father in this story is to have a relationship with his sons. That's what he wants more than anything, a relationship with both of his sons. And that brings us to the joy in this story. Parenting involves deep pain, but it also involves great joy. And we see this father's heart explode with joy. As the younger son is, is making his way toward home, rehearsing the speech, Dad, I've blown it. I no longer deserve to be called your son. How's that sound? That sounds good, right? He's just rehearsing the speech. What is he going to say? His father, while he's yet at a long distance, a far distance, his father sees him and he runs. Imagine that. First century Jewish fathers, they don't run. He runs to meet this son. He throws his arms around him and kisses him. The father yells to his servant, hurry, go get the best robe, put it on him, bring the family ring, put some shoes on this man, call buzzes, order prime rib for everyone, right? We are having a party. My son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This is family grace. This father showers his son with grace. A lavish grace, an incomprehensible grace, an amazing grace. And because of the grace in his heart, this dad is bursting with excitement. He's bursting with joy. How many parents have experienced this kind of joy? The joy that comes when a daughter who hasn't been home for years finally visits. The joy that comes when a, when a, when a distant son picks up the phone and calls. Or, or, or the joy that comes when a broken relationship is restored. Parenting provides moments of great joy. And that joy points us to something deeper. It points us to the joy that God feels. If your heart has ever rejoiced over a son or daughter, your heart has felt God's heart. And your delight in your children is just a fraction of God's delight in you. When we repent, when we turn around and start walking toward God, God runs down the road to greet us. God throws his arm around us and kisses us. God goes absolutely crazy over us. God yells, bring out the best. Let's celebrate. My daughter is home. My son is home. And God responds this way because of grace. 
parents of adult children need to extend grace. And in order to do that, they first need to receive grace. Parenting is a roller coaster ride in which we experience deep pain and great joy. And as we ride this roller coaster, let's never forget that every parent is a child first. A child loved by God and welcomed by God. When we get to the heart of this story, this story about parenting and about God, here's what we discover. God loves you. God welcomes you. God gives you all that is his. And God wants nothing more than to be with you. Let's pray. Let's take a minute to pray for the parents that are here today, particularly the parents of adult children. And God, we just want to first pray for your grace upon them. God, we pray for any place in their heart or in their mind where there is regret. We pray for any place in their heart and mind where there is unresolved hurt, where there is disappointment. God, any ways that they would feel disappointment in themselves. God, that you would speak your grace over them. That they would receive your grace this morning particularly in those places where there is hurt. And God, as we pray for them to receive grace, we also pray for them to extend grace. God, we pray where there are broken relationships with children or broken relationships between children. God, we see even in this story the pain of the father when his two sons can't get along. God, where there is a need that feels overwhelming. We pray that you would empower the, the parents here this morning to extend grace. Not a grace that they manufacture from themselves, for we can't, God, but a grace that comes from you, that your love would flow through them and your amazing grace would empower them to love their children beyond what they even think is they're capable of doing. And God, I pray for all of us that we would understand that you are the God of this story, that you are a God lavish in love for us, and that we would understand that you run, run, run down the road to meet us and to throw your arms around us. May we live in your love and your grace this day. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.